Hey everybody, this is Matt Chu from Upright Health, and today I've got a question from Wolverine31088. I'm going to assume Wolverine is a man, although that may not be a safe assumption, I'm going to do it because, damn it, that's the way I live my life. So Wolverine has a request. Wolverine, he says, quote, I have a request. Can you make a video on hip impingement, please? I think that I have this injury and I need some advice. Uh, the, the diagnosis of the day du jour is femoral acetabular impingement. And I'm actually in the process of writing a bit of a blog post on this on my website at uprighthealth.com. It is a topic that is very near and dear to my heart because I'm pretty sure I could also have had this diagnosis and possibly still can get this diagnosis for femoral acetabular impingement. So for those of you who don't know, FAI, or femor femoral acetabular impingement, is when, uh, supposedly when, the ball and the socket of your hip joint don't grow correctly. Uh, and basically what the theory is, is that either the upper rim of the socket or the upper edge of the ball, or both, have gotten too big, have somehow magically grown in ways that uh, no longer allow them to function correctly, and then they screw up the way your hip joint works. So common treatments will include uh, half-hearted attempts at stretching, uh, and then some steroid injections probably to kind of keep some pain out of the way and then uh, eventually if you get the right doctor talking to you it will be surgery to try to correct either top edge or the ball edge or both whatever it is to try to make your hips apparently move better. So common symptoms you'll see with hip impingement include uh, the inability to raise your, uh, to flex your hip joints um, past 90 degrees. So uh, what that basically means is if you're standing, you can't bring your knee up that high, right, without your back curling over. Or if you're doing like a cats and dogs, uh, cat, cat cow thing in yoga, you won't be able to shift back so that there's uh, less than a 90 degree angle here. What you'll end up doing is you'll come here, or you may even be so bad that you get here, and then your back starts to curl like that. Those are some common, common symptoms of FAI. <clears throat> so, you also find you get snapping in your hips every time you try to flex. It's not comfortable, it's painful, it's horrible, it's really, really irritating. And guess what sports population tends to run into it a lot? I'll let you first think, what sport does Matt play? And that's the biggest hint you need because one of the sports that ends up, uh, the athletes in that sport that end up with a lot of FAI diagnoses, um, it's hockey players. In my uh, mid-twenties, I actually was not able to flex my hips properly. I could not step over objects, if I had to step over my hockey bag or I had to take a big step up two, uh, two steps on a flight of stairs, I couldn't do it because my hips would snap. When I went to shift, I drive a stick shift, every time I have to kind of lift one and then the other, I'd get snapping in my hips and it was really, 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 really uncomfortable. Uh, also, whenever I did this test that I just showed you, if I tried to come back here, this is essentially where I'd stop because it just felt like things going on back here were wrong and then my back would round and that would be it, right? I would just have no ability to move correctly. Now, I actually just turned, I'm not going to tell you how old I am, I'm going to let you guess, but I just had a birthday. I'm no longer in my 20s and um, you'll notice that I don't have a problem with these motions, right? I can still do them. I can still maintain my back. I'm not snapping in my hip right now. It feels fine. <clears throat> motions that were really hard before, like coming up like that, flexing my hip like that, 
I told you were really, really, really painful and uncomfortable for me. They're not anymore. And I haven't had surgery. I haven't had the FAI diagnosis. What I have had is a very stubborn head that told me that if I'm going to enjoy my life, I need to be able to move my hips the way they're supposed to move. Now, there's a funny thing about FAI, and I'm gonna write about it in my blog post, but basically, you can have an MRI that says you have FAI and still have no symptoms of FAI, meaning, According to the MRI, you should have a limited range of motion and you should have pain, but you may have none of those symptoms. On the other hand, you could also have pain in the hips, you could have snapping, and you may not have any MRI um, verified FAI. So, I very much question the idea of making the diagnosis of FAI from an MRI since you, it apparently doesn't seem to have any correlation to actual symptoms showing up in any given person. And if you do any kind of research on MRIs and, and musculoskeletal pain and pathology, you'll find that this is generally true for all joints, right? Knees, shoulders, they find that you can have a rotator cuff tear and have no symptoms whatsoever, even if your MRI appears to say that you're in bad, bad, bad shoulder shape. So, if you have hip impingement, if, you have, if you're talking about FAI Wolverine, then I want you to think about what could possibly be going wrong with your body. Don't think about it in terms of, oh, there's pain, crap, there's pain, what do I do? Think of it in terms of what motions are you missing and what, what muscles could be involved in helping you do that motion. So I mentioned hip flexion. Hip flexion is the biggest one, right? Being unable to do this, right, with, while still maintaining the spinal position. One of the things that happens that Nobody, very few people think about anyway, um, when they're thinking of reduced hip flexion, is the ability of the posterior hip musculature to maintain the correct axis of rotation through a, the entire movement. So when you start to pull up like this, you have this ball moving in the socket like this, right? If the ball is not being held in place correctly through the entire range of motion, think about what's going to happen to the way the ball and the socket articulate. Okay? If the musculature, so I'm, I'm pretending this is my right hip, if the posterior musculature, meaning your butt, your hamstrings, if those aren't working correctly to keep the socket, uh, to keep the ball centered in the socket, your ball is going to run into the socket. Okay, so what I found with my hip and what I found with a lot of people's hips, whether they're in their 20s, 30s, 50s, 60s, the thing that I see most commonly is that people's butts are gone they have no ability to use their butts correctly, or if they can feel their butts working, their butts are really, 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 really weak. And at the same time, their inner thighs are crazy tight, meaning they are not able to open up, open up their legs, they cannot do anything even remotely close to that. And oftentimes what you'll see is when they go to do something with their inner thighs, if uh, if they ever have to do like this kind of adductor mobilization, and this is why I use this a lot, if they ever have to open up like this, rather than being able to get at least out past 90 degrees when you're measuring femur to femur, what you'll end up seeing is you get stuck here, right? You'll get stuck at, boop, right? Less than 90 degrees, and they'll go, ah, right? And it's painful in here. So if we think about, these inner thigh muscles being crazy tight, rock solid, so that you're unable to do this, 
and you need to come up here, is it reasonable to think that the tightness here, that that rock solid inability to relax correctly here and relax and contract correctly here, is it reasonable to believe that that could interfere with proper hip flexion? This mass, this mass of inner thigh crap, is it more likely that dysfunctional muscles in that area are screwing with your hip flexion, screwing with your hip mobility, or is it more likely that somehow the bones of your hip joints have grown incorrectly over time and locked up all of your range of motion? And not thinking even about the likelihood of either of those things, think about which one you'd rather, what kind of intervention you'd rather try first to help yourself re reclaim your range of motion. Would you rather have somebody go in and cut you open and shave bone off, or would you rather take some time to see what stretching does for you? Stretching, foam rolling, massage work, basically whatever it takes to retrain the musculature, retrain your nervous system to use the musculature correctly. I will tell you that it took me about three years to feel like my hips were working the way they were supposed to. However, that was three years of experimenting, trying different things, trying to bust through this restriction without anyone telling me what to do. It was basically just thinking, well, you know, I think my butt probably needs to do more. I think my uh, inner thigh needs to do less. Maybe if I do this exercise, I'll try this exercise, that exercise. It took me some time and I, ha I did get frustrated a lot, but I can boil it down to you, boil it down for you very simply, is get this stuff to stop interfering through the entire range of motion, right? So here your adductors are probably gonna be interfering, right? Here they're gonna be interfering, here they're gonna be interfering. So you need to be retraining those muscles to shut the hell up and get the muscles out here to be helping to stabilize the femur through the whole range of motion. Well, that's how it works. Now, I grant you that there may be some people who may need to get surgery, but if you take time, I can 99% guarantee you that you can make a huge difference to your mobility and to the comfort in your hip. That's from personal and professional experience. So, Wolverine, get out there. Start working on this stuff, start working on this stuff, and remember that pain sucks, life shouldn't.